everyone. My name is Adarevala. I'm a SharePoint Solutions Architect at Create IT in Portugal and also a Microsoft MVP for Office Servers and Services. I'm here to talk to you about how to manage Office 365 groups using the administration UI. If you feel the need to contact me, uh, you can use my blog URL, which you can find below, also my LinkedIn address for my profile and my Twitter handle. So this is the, the new administration center portal for the Office 365, it's still in preview uh, at this time, but it won't be for long, I guess. So <laughs> this is the starting point for how you can what you can do to manage uh, the Office 365 groups in your tenant. You have a groups area here. If you press it, you can see a list of all the groups that are created inside your uh, Office 365 tenant. You can see that not all of them are, have this Office 365 group type. You also will also find here the distribution list and security groups. So the first task that you can do as a, an administrator uh, to manage groups is to create a group. And for that, you just have to press this button here. You can uh, choose which type of group you want. In this case, we want the Office 365 group. And you can give it a name. Let's call it How To Group. Office 365 will automatically uh, take the name and put it into lowercase, remove all the special characters and spaces and, and check if this, uh, this email address is available. Because this is, will be the email address that will be used for the mailbox associated with the group. If you have uh, more than one domain associated with your tenant, you can choose which one you want to use right here on this box. Uh, because on this tenant there's only the default uh, domain, so it's it's grayed out. So you can add a description also here. You can specify the privacy level for the group. By default, all groups are public, so anyone can see uh, what's inside the group and, and ask to join the group. You can also set it to private. So let's set it to public. You can also change the language. Um, and then you have to select if you want to subscribe members at this time or if uh, members will be will join the group at a later time. Let's, let's turn this on. And now you have to specify who will be the owner of this group. If this group was created by uh, a, a user on the Outlook interface, he would be automatically added as owner. But since I'm the administrator and I'm cre creating the group at the admin portal, I'll have to specify who the administrator will be. So in this case, let's select Alex Darrow and let's just create the group. So at this time, behind the scenes, um, a new uh, group will, is being created at uh, Azure Active Directory and then propagated automatically to Exchange Online and SharePoint Online. So it's done. It's right here. You can see the details here. For the group, you can see that Alex Darrow is the owner and also a member. You cannot be an owner if you're not a member also, of course. So let's add two more members, which is another task that you can, you can do as an administrator. Let's add Sarah. And let's add Garth. Okay. Let's save. Okay. So now we have a group with three members, one of which is the owner. Um, you can also edit one additional setting here, which is if you want or if you allow outside users, so users outside your company that don't that are not uh, that don't have a license in your tenant to send emails to this group. This is actually a, an important setting because sometimes the groups are used to share contents with uh, people outside the organization. So let's just put this on. And now any user, any, any person that knows the email address of this mailbox for this group can send uh, emails here and those will appear in the conversations of the group. Okay, so um, one final task you can do on this screen is to delete the group. I'm not going to do that because I, it would be deleting the group I just created. But uh, it's also one thing you could do, delete the group. Okay, because uh, groups are an, a central entity but which is exposed differently 
on many of the services that encompass uh, Office 365, some of the management settings will have to be um, have to be changed on those services themselves. One example is for Exchange Online. So now let's see what we can do as uh, to manage uh, the groups on the Exchange side. On the Exchange Administration Center, there's one thing you can do here, which is if you go to Groups, you'll see that you can't see any Office 365 groups here on this interface, but there's one thing you can do. You can configure the group naming policy, which might be important. For instance, if you have a very large organization and if you're letting all of your users create groups and you don't want them to repeat names for instance so you can apply some sort of policy to the group names so that they don't get to be repeated uh, by users that are for instance in different countries so you might want for some uh, for instance to add a suffix which could be something like an underscore followed by an attribute which could be for instance the city that the the user that creates that group belongs to or yeah the city or the country code or the country or region so let's let's use city so this will this will add an underscore followed by this the, the contents of the city attribute of the user that creates uh, the group so let's do this let's save the policy you can also configure one additional thing which are the, the block words so block words is for instance you if you want to uh, prevent users from using specific words when creating groups uh, you might not want to allow any users to to use the word word in their in their groups so let's save this these policies will only apply to groups created by regular users. So administrators will always be able to create groups with the block words and won't get the suffix applied to them. Okay? So let's go to a u let's get a user to create one. Now here's the group that we just created, which we set as owner for Alex Darrow. You can see it's a new group has those same three users that I added through the admin portal so now let's create a new group and let's name it uh, my special group okay so it's still available it's public okay and let's subscribe new users too this is another way to create a group this is how a regular user will see it now I can I will add the same members Sarah and let's add Gath to okay add you can see that I got the suffix of the city I belong to in this case San Diego which is the, the city of Alex Darrow added as a suffix with the underscore to the name of the group that I created so the policy was enforced now let me try and create a group with a, one of the block words. So let's say my word group. So it will at this point it will allow me to create the group at this point because it's not still it's not validating right now. But let's try and create it. See, uh, the policy is also enforced. It will say that I cannot use the word word because it's not allowed to be used in the group ID or my organization. Okay, so this, these are the tasks you can execute uh, in the admin UI of Office 365 and Exchange Online regarding the Office 365 groups. Thank you for watching this how-to video. I hope you found it useful. Feel free to contact me if you have any comments. See you next time.